Homeostasis. So homeostasis is the process by which organisms maintain a relatively constant or stable internal environment for your body cells. The word homeostasis came from ancient Greek. Homeo means the same and stasis means to stay. So because of that, it's to stay the same. Our internal environment is trying to stay the same and trying to maintain a balance. It consists of two stages. The first one detects changes from the stable state and counteracting changes from the stable state. So we've got the stable state is a balance. If it goes anything outside of balance, we detect those change. And once we detect it, we need to counteract it and bring it back to normal. So it's a feedback mechanism. Homeostasis is maintained by feedback systems Feedback is a way of stabilizing body systems such as the nervous or endocrine systems. So your endocrine system is where hormones are released. Why is homeostasis important? So the stability or homeostasis is important because most of the cells are made up of water. Water expands when frozen and cell membranes will rupture. This means it leads to cell death. So if it's a freezing cold environment, if your body didn't maintain your internal environment, your cells would freeze and they would die. Enzymes actually slow functioning at low temperatures. This means that your metabolism then slows. For animals that hibernate, this is expected and it's okay. And that is how they survive through the winter. They actually have decreased expectations for food so they can survive a winter because they're sleeping the whole winter. Their metabolic processes actually slow down during this time. At more than 45 degrees, enzymes denature. Metabolism slows or can actually stop. So because of that, it's very important to maintain homeostasis. Examples, so I go through different examples now of homeostasis. When you go for a run outside, your body can build up a sweat. This is your body's reaction to cool you down because your body is actually creating heat and your body can't cope with the amount of heat, so your body will sweat. When you actually sweat, when it evaporates, that actually has a cooling effect on your body. If you touch a hot pan after it has been on the stove, your body will actually jerk, and this is actually a nervous system reflex reactions, and it still is with homeostasis. So this is your nervous system protecting your body from excess harm. Maintaining the internal environment both plants and animals act to maintain a balance in their internal environments, despite the external conditions. Now we might sweat if it's hot, we might shiver if it's cold. Plants don't look like they do anything in the hot or the cold, but especially in excess heat, they do need to cool down. And they might open up their pores to also sweat. And when they sweat, excess water comes out of their pores, it's evaporated and it cools the plant down. An example of homeostasis that occurs in both plants and animals includes temperature regulation. So it's by the skin in animals and by the leaves in plants. So inside the body, there is a constant maintenance of, we've got blood levels, the pH of blood must be around 7.4 outside this range and it can be toxic. We've got blood pressure. Our a normal blood pressure is around about 120 over 80. However, there's people with lower blood pressure and people with higher blood pressure naturally and that's okay too within a certain range. Higher blood pressure is more harmful to your body if you have extreme high blood pressure. Water levels, we have water levels in our body. We tend to drink about two liters of water a day in some form, whether it's water, soft drink, or if you're actually eating foods such as fruits and vegetables, you're still getting that water source. We have a salt balance. So you have a salt balance within your body that you need to maintain. A lot of, we might have been reading a lot of things that say salt is bad for you and you shouldn't have excess salt. There are foods that are high in salt However, salt is important to maintain water levels within the body. So salt is very important as well. 
we've got wastes and our body naturally produces them. So when we produce wastes, we need to get rid of them somehow. We might exhale carbon dioxide and that's a waste or we might excrete urine, which is another waste. Oxygen and carbon dioxide concentration. So we need to maintain those two levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide. If we don't have enough oxygen, our muscles can't work efficiently. And if we've got too much carbon dioxide, it can actually be toxic to our blood. We've got blood glucose levels. Whenever we eat our, and sugars go into our blood, our blood actually maintains the sugar levels within the blood to, say, to make sure that it's a good balanced level. Our body temperature needs to stay at around 36 and a half degrees. And our nutrient con concentration. Temperature maintenance. So your body will function optimally at around 37 degrees. So it fluctuates between 36.1 degrees and 37.8 degrees. If your body goes outside that temperature range though, it's your body may not cope and therefore this can be risky or even fatal. Above 42 degrees, it can actually be fatal and below I think 35 degrees, it's actually detrimental to your body. So this is why a fever, when your body goes up and down in temperature, a fever can be extremely serious if your body temperature raises or lowers too much outside this range. This is due to enzymes and their ability to only work within a certain temperature range, and it's a very narrow temperature range. Outside this temperature range, enzymes denature and they will not function. Hence, your body will not be able to cope with normal functioning. Temperature is tightly regulated as there is a narrow temperature range where the body will perform optimally. Nutrient concentration. A lack of nutrients may lead to diseases such as, so a lack of vitamin C can cause a disease called scurvy. The symptoms of scurvy are bleeding of the gums, loosened teeth, a lack of appetite and diarrhea. Now oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. Living cells, especially muscles and organs, need a continued supply of oxygen to carry out respiration to produce energy and function optimally. Our cells need to produce energy to perform. So as a result, it needs oxygen and it gets rid of carbon dioxide. So it produces carbon dioxide as a waste. Because carbon dioxide readily dissolves in water, it lowers the pH of blood to become more acidic. Carbon dioxide needs to be removed as quickly as possible because this lowering of pH affects homeostasis and can denature enzymes. So oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. By removing excess carbon dioxide, it prevents a buildup of carbonic acid. So when you produce carbon dioxide, it gets into your blood and when it reacts with the water in your blood, it becomes carbonic acid. This acid lowers the pH of your blood, which can be a lot more toxic. So it, if there's a buildup of carbon dioxide, it increases breathing rate and depth. So you breathe in more strongly and this will balance out the pH of the blood. Carbonic acid forms when carbon dioxide dissolves in the water. Maintaining chemical substances within the body. So the body's control uh, is in control of chemical substances available to cells. These chemical substances are transported through organisms by blood vessels in mammals and vascular tissue in plants. Maintaining the internal environment. So the control of water and salt balance is actually done by the kidneys. Osmoregulation is what it's called. And the pH and waste products are brought about mainly by kidneys and mammalian bodies. And this here is a kidney cross section. So it's a kidney cut in half. It's what the kidney looks like inside. More homeostatic processes. We've got external influences as well that we need to balance within our body. Our body can react in different ways depending on the changes and fluctuations in the external environment. It could be a change in exercise. If you exercise more, you produce more muscle. But if you exercise more, you also produce more heat and your body needs to bring that back to normal. You've got changes in sleep patterns. You might find that if you sleep less one night, if you only get four hours of sleep one night, the next night you tend to sleep more deeply. And this is because your body is still trying to bring your body back to balance and you do need sleep to recover.
changes in diet. So if you eat more acidic foods, such as lemons and citrus, your bodies will alter the pH and to bring it back to normal. It's another example of homeostasis within your body. You have changes of temperature. If you're cold, you might um, deep shiver, okay? you might actually get goosebumps so your hair stand up and when your hair stand up that actually traps the heat within your hairs and when you shiver it actually contracts your muscles so as you're shivering you don't actually notice it but all of your muscles are contracted and this actually helps you to generate heat so that's when you're cold it's a homeostasis your body is trying to bring you back to normal they may also desire a change in the person to put on extra clothes or seek shelter. So this is a behavioral mechanism to create heat. If you're cold, you get a jacket. Okay, changes in light and seasonal changes. Within certain countries, there might be less light in winter or lots more light in summer. So this includes your day length and temperature variations. If, you're, if you change in altitude, your breathing rate might increase because the air at higher altitudes is actually thinner, so there's less oxygen. So you might actually find that you're breathing a lot more at higher altitudes. Homeostatic responses. Animals need not only to detect, but to respond to the internal and external environment. This is called homeostatic responses. Effectors are the body's response mechanisms Examples include muscles and glands. So muscles might contract to produce heat or glands might release hormones, okay, or chemicals. And they release these hormones to create a change within your body to bring your body back to the stable state. Some homeostatic responses occur quickly and we can call these reflexes. Homeostasis and different organisms. So homeostasis and receptor sensitivity differs in different organisms. For example, different animals have different levels of visual acuity abilities depending on the animal's environment and requirements for survival. Eagles have well-developed visual sensors to detect small moving objects at high heights to be able to hunt for prey whilst at a height, whereas another animal, such as a wombat, does not have the same visual acuity. Dogs have stronger ability to smell and it detects chemical scents via the sense of smell than humans. Snakes can detect and use infrared heat and radiation and platypuses can detect weak electric fields generated by their prey. In summary, homeostasis means to be able to maintain a stable internal environment. Homeostasis maintains temperature, blood glucose levels, the pH of blood, wastes within your body, nutrients, salt levels, water levels, oxygen, and carbon dioxide levels. An example of homeostasis is shivering or goosebumps when cold. That concludes homeostasis.